Blessings, everyone. Um, we're going to get ready to get started tonight with our class. And um, <clears throat> I want to ask um, Dr. Hartley, if you would uh, open us up in prayer, please, and then we will get started with our class tonight. Yes, sir. Gracious Father, we give you glory, praise, and honor. We thank you so much for this time to learn and taste of you. Father, let us all be attentive and let everything that we hear, Heavenly Father, be sealed in our spirits and in our souls that it cannot be taken. And Father, bless the apostle coming forth, Father. Let there be no interference technically. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. them for a hearty tuck salad. Prepare tasty deviled eggs with ease and sliced egg sandwiches that are sure to please. Egg pot is great when you're in a hurry. Just pop it in the microwave and enjoy a healthy breakfast on the go. For his goodness and for his mercy, glory to God. For the Lord is good <clears throat> and his glory Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom you have redeemed out of the hand of the enemy. Glory to God. So again, welcome everybody tonight. Um, a time of uh, a time, another time in the world of Kingdom Academy, and uh, I'm going to ask that everyone, as we prepare to get started, if you could 
um, take this, take a, a, a moment to just make sure that your device is muted so that um, we can um, we can move forward without any um, noise that's uh, um, maybe distracting from others who are hearing um, and listening. So um, again, we greet you in Jesus' joy. And um, I'm excited tonight um, as we, we uh, prepare to continue with our lesson that we have been uh, working in. And we've been talking about um, the soul, the restoration of the soul, the need for the restoration of the soul and why it's so important to us as believers. And um, I believe that we, um, I, I uh, put the, an attachment into GroupMeek for everybody to be able to have um, that, that printout. And for those that are not able to, um, I'm going to still uh, share my screen um, um, in order to for everybody to kind of be on board. But um, before I do that, there's something I want to, I want to go back to um, something that the, the Spirit of God gave me to declare on Sunday. And sometimes even uh, when you're going um, and you're in a time of preaching, um, oftentimes the Spirit of God will give you something to declare that in that moment, you don't have the opportunity to kind of uh, go, go back and kind of really uh, bring more clarity to. And because I think this is, a, is really important and matter of fact, it goes along with what um, we're going to be talking about tonight. On Sunday um, afternoon in the message, the Lord gave me um, this um, understanding in the scripture talking about um, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how that there was a difference between the Holy Spirit lighting upon Jesus as opposed to the 120 disciples that were in the upper room. So what I would like to do, um, cause I wanna just clarify something cause this is actually gonna go into what we're talking about tonight. Um, so if someone could get for me Acts chapter two, verse two and three. And if someone else can get for me um, Malachi chapter three, Verse one through six, we'll, we'll go there. And then also um, John, if someone could get John chapter one, verse 30 through 33. So Acts chapter two, verse two and three. Malachi chapter three, verse one through six. And then St. John chapter one, verses 30 through 33. Um, because the, the Spirit of God brought this back to my remembrance as I uh, was just, you know, really just um, giving God praise and just reflecting upon the word of the Lord. And um, as I said um, uh, a minute ago, that sometimes in a time of preaching, when you're declaring the word of the Lord, the Spirit of God will give you something to declare that at that time does not really afford you the opportunity to really um, to bring more clarity to to expound on um, and to really qu quantify or qualify um, a declaration. And one of the things we we know as a corporate house, a local corporate house, part of the uh, larger arena, is that we stand on the word of the Lord and that we stand on truth and that. We, we always strive to make sure that anything that we declare on the behalf of God, that it is that the scripture of God and from God validates the statement and declarations of God. Um, so if anyone has um, Acts chapter two, verse two and three. And some um, apostle, you want me to read it? Yes, Acts chapter two, verse two and three. Yes, sir. And sudden, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them 
cloves tongues like as a fire and is set upon each of them. Okay, so we see in Acts chapter two, um, verse two and three, we see the manifestation or the see the working of the Holy Spirit. And, and that he, when he poured himself out, that the wind of God is what filled the room um, as a way of baptizing as well, because it covered, it overshadowed them all. Then we see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in, upon them individually as tongues of fire. And uh, I want you to pay attention to the word suddenly in Acts chapter two, verse two and three, okay? So does anybody have Malachi chapter three? And um, let's say verse one through, we'll read, we'll read one through six, because I want to bring something up. I have it. Okay. Okay. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may, but who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and a fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. He shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be present, be pleasant unto the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against the false swearers, against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and, and that turn aside the stranger from his right and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not Consume. Okay, so now before we go to John chapter one, I want to just explain some here. So when I when the Holy Spirit had me make the statement about the difference between the manifestation of the Holy Spirit on Jesus, um, the um, the Bible calls him the only begotten of the Father. Then he, he calls him the firstborn among many brethren, and the Spirit of God said that the the lighting of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus as a dove, because Jesus is the completed work. And we know that he was a complete work because the Bible says he knew no sin. So he was the completed work. So the Holy Spirit did not need to light upon Jesus um, in that, that regard. So it lit upon him as the dove, as a completed work. But in Acts chapter two, we see where the, 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 the Holy Spirit lit upon the, the 120 as tongues of fire because Jesus was the finished work of God that was complete. As believers, the body of Christ, we are the finished work of God because of what he's already done, but we are a, a work in progress. We are finished work in progress which is why the Bible says man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that what proceeded out of the mouth of God. And so to, to, to show you another, um, an, another scripture that coincides with that, the spirit of the Lord gave me in Malachi, because notice it said in Acts two, he said, suddenly there was a sound and the tongues of fire set upon their heads. In Malachi, we see where he, this is a prophetic word of what we see 
in, in, in Acts 2. And he said, suddenly, here we go with that word again, suddenly, that he will come to his temple. And look what it says. He will be as a refiner's fire and full of soap. Verse 3 says, and he shall sit. That word sit is the same one that we saw when the Holy Spirit manifested himself as tongues of fire upon the head of the 120 in order to purify the sons of Levi. And, and, I, and I, that's why I said I wanted to go back and just um, uh, show even using uh, other scriptures that, that statement about being a work in progress. Because while we are in Christ, we are complete, yet we, are, we walk out that completion, that completed work daily, every day. And it does not just happen by osmosis. We have to make the choices. We have to choose to cooperate and, um, and uh, to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Um, we've learned this even for the fruit of the Spirit to be developing us. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not gonna make nothing happen. We have to co-partner by um, working in obedience and following the scripture uh, the word of the Lord through obedience and by obeying the scripture and submitting ourselves to the leadership of the Holy Spirit, then he begins as that fire, he begins to set upon and to do the work in us that we need to so that as the Bible says, we prove or we manifest the work, uh, the, the will of God. And, um, but notice also he says that, that, that it's gonna take this refiner's fire in order to purify the sons of Levi and purge them so that their offering would be one in righteousness. And he says, then I will come near to you to judgment. Now, oftentimes, you know, we, we talk about that we want to extend judgment outwardly, but there will never be in judgment outwardly until the Holy Spirit first does it work inwardly. There has to be that inward work. And then once that inward work is done, then God can deal. Let me give you an example. Jesus said to Peter, and when you are converted, go strengthen your brethren. Peter had to have a work done in him by the Holy Spirit, because remember the, the account um, in Acts where Peter encountered Simon the sorcerer. And, and in Malachi talks about sorcerers. And had not the Holy Spirit already done a work in Peter in his in, inwardly in his soul, Peter would not have been able to successfully um, pass this test of dealing with this sorcerer, uh, Simon the sorcerer, who wanted the hand, he wanted to buy the hand of God because he saw that it, it did work. But but again, when Peter saw him, Peter said to Simon the sorcerer, your money perish with you. because you can't buy this. This is not a work that you can buy with, with monetary things. This kind of work can only be possessed through a, a surrendering, a dying, a dying to yourself. And you say, well, Pastor, why are you saying that? Because we, we as a body of Christ, if we're gonna talk about stepping into more of God, if we're talking about, um, um, progressively the bible talks about going from faith to faith glory to glory this is how it happens it's a progressive work we go from faith to faith and glory to glory um, who has john chapter 1 verse 30 through 33 i have that apostle okay thank you this is he of whom i said after me cometh a man which is preferred before me for he was before me and i knew him not but that he should be made manifest to israel therefore i come baptizing with water and john bared record saying i saw the spirit descending from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him and i knew him not but he that sent me to baptize with water the same said unto me, 
upon whom thou shalt see the spirit descending and remaining on him. The same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. So we see in John, and, um, and, and if you can write this scripture down, um, Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. Um, Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 through 17. So Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 through 17 talks about... Um, about the dove and uh, literally the dove landing upon Jesus. And I'm, I'm sorry, um, it, it talks about how when John encounters Jesus, um, John says to Jesus that I'm not worthy to even unlatch your shoe. And Jesus said to John, suffer it to be so that all righteousness must be fulfilled. And we see in John chapter one where John, the instruction to John from God was, this is how you're going to know him, the Messiah, is that who you see the Holy Spirit landing on and remaining, that's him. So when John baptized Jesus and, and the heavens opened up and the Holy Spirit descended as a dove and landed on Jesus and remained, that confirmed to John that this is he whom God has spoken of that John was supposed to baptize and that he is the Messiah. And I want to uh, also, uh, and I, just to show you what I mean by the difference, because we know Jesus, the Bible said he was born as us in the world, but he knew no sin. So, 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 um, the spirit of God manifested as a dove on him, but on us, we'll, we'll work God progressively. We go from faith to faith, from glory to glory. And so the Holy Spirit is our helper that helps us go um, from, from faith to faith and, and glory to glory. Now, this is the part I wanna get to, and we're gonna, we're gonna move further in our class. When Jesus said to John and Matthew, he said, suffer it to be so, so that we can fulfill all righteousness. This is where um, I want us to add in our focus when we talk about the our soul and the, the salvation, the deliverance of our soul, the working out of our soul salvation, that it is a work of choice that we have to allow through our submission, our surrendering, and um, obedience to the Holy Spirit. We have to allow the Holy Spirit to perform this work um, as he is the, the fire of God. We have to allow him to perform this work in our soul for us to fulfill all righteousness. Because Peter said that the Bible, the word of God is a sure word of prophecy. And how we see a prophetic word that was spoken become a manifestation is that we have to allow the Holy Spirit to work that out in us. But, but, but it is not something that happens. And you say, Apostle, well, where are you going with this? So remember, um, our, uh, remember our initial um, statement when we talked about how that, um, that you know, even before sin, I mean, before Christ rather, that all of us had our time in the earth, that there are things that impacted us, that we have to still, even now that we, are, we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, there are things that we have to do in partnership with the Holy Spirit to work out or to allow it to be so, so that we fulfill the righteousness of the scripture when it talks about being holy. He said, be ye holy for I, the Lord God, am holy. We can't live how we want to live and still name the name of the Lord and still be accepted by Christ. That's not how this works. 
And so we have to partner with him. And, um, and one of the things the Spirit of the Lord uh, was, was um, even bringing to my remembrance was that um, if you remember last week, we talked about um, the news and how that there's so many things that have happened since the pandemic and the, the, the stress and distress and all of these things that the world, excuse me, in the whole entire world had to go through as well as the, 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 the body of Christ. And that there's some people in the body of Christ who were having a very difficult time, even though from God's perspective, we the church are supposed to be the answer, the image, the illustration, the light of God in the earth. We are supposed to be the ones who visibly show Christ so that the world in darkness can see the light, to know that there is an, a different way, to know that there is an answer, to know that there is a solution. Watch this. Even though we are subjected to the same things the world is subjected to, but we have the hope of glory, who is the Holy Spirit in us, that makes the difference that even though we are subjected to the same things the world are, but we do not have to respond to them the same way that the world does because we have a helper. We have a practically the Holy Spirit. And I was in a conversation today, even um, uh, talking with uh, Prophet Kern and listen, a lot of people in this year space who are believers have become disappointed. Uh, people have become discouraged. Um, people have been tempted to walk away from the faith. Uh, there are people who were discrediting or charging God. The Bible said foolishly. In other words, they're charging God wrongly. And most of it, and there were even, um, the, the Holy Spirit said this, there were some people who became ashamed. Paul says, I am not ashamed. In other words, I'm not embarrassed. I'm not disappointed. I'm not even misguided. And I do not feel less than because of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because I understand that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the power of God unto salvation or to deliverance. And some people have allowed the enemy to make them become ashamed because it would appear as though the gospel is not working. And, and mostly because there has been a misrepresentation, a misconception, and a misunderstanding of the work of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are some people who believe that once they come to Christ, that they enter into this utopia world. But Christ never promised that. Um, if you have your paper, let's let's go. I want I want to uh... Apostle, could I say something while we're going there? Yes. Um, I, I was um going back when you were talking. Um I, I went back to Malachi where he said, um, talk about talking about how the spirit of the Lord was like a refiner's fire and the fuller soap. And so I looked up um, about that fuller soap. And I just wanted to read this part um, because the fuller soap is what they use when after they cut the uh, sheep's wool and they use it to purify, to purify that, that wool. And um, it said it included an extremely harsh soap, which was the, the uh, fuller soap. And um, I was reading it, it said it, it would ultimately, after much scrubbing and working through it, um, that it would eventually bring that, that, uh, that wool to the place where it needed to be. But the part that stuck out was that it was an undesirable job because it was smelly. And it, it just wasn't um, a job that anybody, anybody really wanted. And so um, as I begin to read more, um, uh, someone had brought out about the point 
that some things in life are like that, that um, when things start to happen to us, that um, without the cleansing of the Holy Spirit, um, we, we, would be un, it, we would be undesirable, but we are undesirable in that state. But with the cleansing of the Holy Spirit, it brings us back to the state where we need to be. That's the purpose of the refiner fire and the fuller soap. Amen. Yes, because again, there is the will of God and the design of God of how things were supposed to be before the foundation of the world, before Adam and Eve fell uh, by transgression. And so the responsibility of the Holy Spirit is to provide for us the power and the means along with our submission and surrendering to him to allow him to do the work. That word suffered to be so is what Jesus was saying to John was allow it to be so and so that we can fulfill all righteousness, the things, the prophetic word that has been spoken about us we have to allow this to be, and we have to participate in this so that this will manifest and to uh, and, and show all righteousness and prove all righteousness. And so this, this is why we have to, um, it's, it's not something that automatically happens as a believer. This is how we know when you talk about coming into levels of maturity, when you mature in Christ, what happens is you you make the decision to partner with the Holy Holy Spirit. In other words, when presented with an opportunity um, to choose between what's unrighteous and what is righteous, because you matured in Christ, you make the choice to embrace or to do what is right, even though you you could choose to do righteous or you could do what what your desire is um and and please and, and if anyone have any comments or you have a question um feel free um to stop at any time if you want to uh you have a comment apostle yes as i'm looking also at john the baptist and jesus we, and we look at not only the suddenly and him saying separate be so you also said must partner with the Holy Spirit. If we look at their, their lives from the beginning when they were in the womb, even though we don't see this in scripture, we know that um, Jesus and John are cousins because of Mary and Elizabeth. And when, when, when they were in the wombs, they left, you know, there was a leaping, we say, they say there was a leaping in the, the womb when um, Elizabeth met Mary. And so one would assume that in their being brought up, say John the Baptist, that surely this story and everything was told to John long before he began his ministry. Okay. So, but he did not let his relationship to Jesus, neither anything that he may have been told growing up about Jesus, um, deter him from his assignment and for him making the choice because John still had to be in the wilderness sounding the alarm. And he did not know when Jesus' ministry was going to occur. And so even though he knew, he may have known what his mother and father had told him, he still had to go by what the spirit of the Lord said. I, I hope this is making sense. He still had to go by what the spirit of the Lord said that of course, this is my son and, and also whom you see the Holy Spirit falling upon, Th this is him. And so when you're looking at all of this, time came by and it was like, when you say suddenly, you know, suddenly simply meant at that particular time, 
this suddenly happened because John had been in the wilderness for a while preaching the coming of Jesus Christ. But he did not know exactly what, you know what I'm saying, when he was going to come. Not only that, Malachi said it was going to, uh, if you look at Malachi, it says suddenly, and it talks about him, Holy Spirit, coming into the temple, which also was a little bit different because they weren't in the actual synagogue uh, when Jesus received the, the fire. I'm sorry, when the dove, Holy Spirit fell upon Jesus, they were actually out in the wilderness, hereby also letting us know and prophesying that at some point our bodies are going to become the temple of the Holy Spirit. So it was a whole lot in there when we talking about the suddenly, uh, you still must fulfill the work. It doesn't matter what you may have read and done. You still have to obey and make that choice to follow the Holy Spirit. And Jesus told John, basically when he says, suffer it to be so for righteousness sake. In other words, forget about cause what we may have learned or what we knew when we were born. We got to still do this, what God says. Otherwise we won't be in order. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. And it required a complete sacrifice, <laughs> um, which is spirit, soul, and body, which is what we see in Romans 12, um, one and two. He says, present your body as a living sacrifice. Um, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it gives us that totality of how we are supposed to be surrendered to God. And when we surrender to God in that completeness, um, what happens is we fulfill righteousness. In other words, we reveal the rightness of God's word, not only in our mind, uh, 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 in our mind, in our will, in our emotions, but we also prove and demonstrate the rightness of God's word, even in our body. Because remember, Jesus had to stand in the water. His body was presented in the water. So not just his soul in, in, in yielding to God, but his body as well was presented. And, um, and that's how we have to do it. So which means that we have to, we cannot live apart from the body, from Jesus' perspective, the soul, the mind, will, and emotions. In other words, your thought life, your desire to make a, a choices, and your your feelings or senses have to work in conjunction um, with your spirit man first, <clears throat> because that's who the Holy Spirit communicates with. And then your it transfers in your soul. And I said on last week how the soul is that middle ground, um, that, that work of transformation, renewal, that re-renovation has to happen in your soul. And remember, we talked about why that soul, that middle ground needs to be renovated because at the first Adam um, defaulted by through transgression, utilizing the soul. That's how Adam transgressed against God. He used his soul to transgress against God. And as a result of it, his decision, him and Eve's decision by the soul the transgress the will, the perfect will of God impacted not only their body, but it also impacted all the creation which God had given them to oversee. So then we see in Romans chapter eight, verse 18 uh, through 20, I believe, how that this is going to be restored. It says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. For the earnest um, of the creature um, is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And remember, I talked to you on last week about supply and demand. So here we see that supply and demand, that the sons of God is the supply of God, and that the earth creation, which fell under transgression, is waiting for the restoration of the sons of God to get back into God's original plan, God's original design, 
so that everything will come back into obedience and alignment. And while we know that all of the earth yet is still working through this progressive uh, work, but you and I individually, as a son of God, as we as we fulfill righteousness by one, let it, working out salvation or deliverance in our soul by partnering with the Holy Spirit, as we do that and we come into alignment and we 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 come into those di dimensions of um, progressive dimensions of faith to faith and glory to glory, what happens is everything that we are accountable and responsible for in this earth in this life comes back in to right standing with God, the curse of rebellion and disobedience and transgression is removed when we walk in obedience to God. But what we have to understand is that is a choice that doesn't just happen. And that's why I said that there are many people who are giving up the faith, <clears throat> many people who are um, upset um, with God and many people are, are misguided in their understanding of faith because they were thinking that once I made Jesus Lord that I enter into this place of utopia and that bad things are not supposed to happen, um, that I should not have to go through trials, um, but that's not true. The word never said that. As a matter of fact, everything in the Bible shows us that if we're going to name the name of Christ, we are going to be in war. And there are times that we, when the Holy Spirit brings to light in our soul an area that we have a challenge with, that is not time to blame the enemy. That is not the time to blame other people. That is the time that the Holy Spirit is pointing a place to you and I that we need to submit and surrender to God because this place is a residue, remember Thomas Burton, of our prior journey in the earth before Christ. This is an impact from that time before Christ that now the Holy Spirit is saying, you need to submit this to me and allow me to work in you as the holy fire of God to purify you in this area, because if you don't, the enemy will always have place in this area and you'll never see, watch this, the rightness of God come to fruition where you can actually say, like the children of Israel in, in, uh, when they went in the promised land, here is the fruit from the land. And there are many people in the body of Christ who are disgruntled because they're living life without fruit or evidence because they have been under the misunderstanding that certain things are supposed to happen. No, listen, we got to choose to love. We have to choose to forgive. Even if everything in you is telling you don't do it, we must allow, like Jesus said, we must forgive. We got to, we have to obey that instruction, suffer it to be so, obey that instruction so that we can fulfill all righteousness. So like the disciples said, well, how many times should we forget? Seven, seven times seven? Jesus says 70 times seven. Amen. So then apostle. Yes. Can we then come to the, I won't say conclusion assumption what prophet Natalie was talking about with the refiner's soap. Our heart is like that dirty wool <laughs> that needs the refiner's soap. And the refiner's soap is the presence of the Holy Spirit and whether or not we want that our wool to be cleaned by the refiner's soap, it is up to us. Otherwise, it's just going to stay dirty. Like some some dirty laundry, you know, when I, when um, I'm, I'm reminded when I, uh, some, a lot of times when I would go over to Ghana, they're not using a wash machine, the clothes are in the water and they got some soap, but as long as that's, they're just in the water and they've got the soap on the side, it does no good. They've got to actually take that soap 
and rub the clothes in order for it to get clean. Otherwise, it's just going to sit there and be dirty. No matter how long it stay in the water, it doesn't matter until that, um, that, 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 you know, that scrubbing takes place. So our heart is like that dirty wool that came off the sheep that needs that refiner soap, which is the Holy Spirit. And if we don't want Holy Spirit to do nothing, he's just going to sit there and do nothing until we use it. Is, is that kind of what you're saying? Absolutely. Because it's a choice, because the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Mm -hmm. And his assignment from God the Father is to be our helper, not the one who do everything. Once we make the decision the same way when we came to Christ, we had to make the decision to make Jesus Lord over our life is the same way we have to walk in that same power of choice to allow him to be Lord and to allow him to work righteousness out in us. Because listen, no matter how well you have come to know the Lord, none of us know our own soul completely, only Christ. And we can say in faith what we would do in any given situation, but the test or the evidence of faith is not proven until we are faced with that very situation and until we respond to righteousness in righteousness so that righteousness is fulfilled in us, then only then can it be uh, fulfilled, if you will, complete faith. If that if that 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 makes sense, because you you that's why the Bible says for us not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought. And there are many, many times we have in our walk with God, our relationship with Christ, and because of what we have acquired spiritually or we have seen come to pass, we we're walking in the strength and the faith of what we have seen come to pass. But if we do not stay, if we, if humility is still not our continual garment, pride will lift up and pride will expose an area to you that you did not consider or you did not know. And the Bible said pride comes before a fall. And so this is why we have to work with the Holy Spirit. And uh, I'm trying to scroll up here um, through the paper. Please uh, just bear with me. Um, if you if you have the paper, um, let's go down to um, where the paragraph that says, this is why now there is a need for the soul to be restored. Um, and listen, I, I really feel so impressed of the Holy Spirit with this because there are many people losing faith battles because of misunderstanding of how faith works. And listen, if we could bypass having to make those decisions, I'll give you an example. Jesus in the garden. He said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass. That was a moment of Jesus' humanity being very transparent, very open, that in his human flesh, the preference was let this cup pass. But the degree of his surrender and, and submission to God the Father was so settled that he followed it up with nevertheless, and that's why I said all of us, when we encounter a time of challenge, a time, a faith fight, um, and, and, and I walk with the Lord, there will rise in us that voice that says, can this cup pass? But we have to be willing to take the cup. In other words, to go through that process. And many times we don't want to go through that because you know what? It's painful. And the other reason the Holy Spirit is really highlighting this is that, listen, if we're going to be mature in God, we have to understand that when we talk about the more of God, when we're talking about 
um, stepping into the deep things of God, or are we talking about um, sacrifice and suffering? That is not losing a car. It's not losing a house. That's not people walking away from you. That is not the suffering that the Bible is talking about. The suffering that the Bible is talking about is when we deny ourselves and when we put our body on our complete body on the altar, according to Romans 12. There is a suffering and a pain that your soul is going to go through when you surrender to God. That is the affliction the Bible is talking about. And that's what's going to bring, that's the, when we do that, the fire of God. Notice that the fire of God is always significant with altars. You, you always notice the, the fire of God is always connected and uh, um, very significant to altars. Even when Elijah prepared the sacrifice, that it was consumed by fire. Okay, so this is why we need for the soul to be restored because the soul, mind, will, and emotions that cause an initiated defense against God, it produced rebellion, chaos, division, and it brought separation from God that resulted in a curse. Where Adam and Eve and creation once enjoyed the oneness, talk about the power of one, the rest, peace of God that comes through faith and obedience where they once enjoyed that when they, as long as they were walking in oneness with God. Rebellion and disobedience brought a division of spirit, soul, and body in man. And it also brought division between man and creation. And then it brought division between uh, creation uh, and, and God, man, creation, and God. We see this in Genesis which is why I said in Romans chapter uh, eight, where we see the restoration of that when sons are restored, that creation benefits because it's groaning, waiting for the original plan of God. And the same way it was by an intentional decision that caused a rebellion, the separation from God and brought about the curse the same way an intentional decision brought about restoration. And we see that in Romans um, 5, 17. And uh, Romans 10, 8 through 10, which we know that is the scripture most time we um, reference to when we talk about salvation, that if you will confess the Lord Jesus in your heart, um, believe in your heart and confession is made with our mouth to salvation because again it is that decision and then it is the declaration the 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 communication expressing of that decision verbally um for what the heart man believes to righteousness okay um let me let me let me skip down so romans 10 Verse 10 and verse 17 says, with the heart man believes into righteousness, right standing or knowledge of God. Then with our mouth, confession is made unto us. Um, did someone have something they wanted to share? Okay. Uh, confession is made into salvation. Okay, when we talk about salvation, we're talking about deliverance, the rescuing and the restoration of uh, us, us, us back to God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So since we know this, we, we know that we war against the fleshly worldly lusts that war against and contend for our souls by our decisions. And, um, and according to Romans 10, that our decisions are empowered by one, the knowledge of God, because remember, no, the Bible says no man can come to God except he draw him. So it takes the knowledge of God to draw us. Then it takes us having faith in God, 
Bible says that he that come to God must first believe that he is and that he is rewarded them that seek him. So then thirdly, we have to, we have to walk in obedience to God. Then number four, we have to have the patience of God because remember it's a progressive work. It's not gonna happen all at once. And remember, we also referenced it to what God told um, Joshua. Now I'm, 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 I'm giving you the land. And as you go in the land, I'm going to give it to you little by little. That is progressive work of God. He said, I'm going to give the land to you little by little. And it's the same with, with us as a believer. Even though our desire is for the entire land and the whole land is, uh, is ours. And let me just make a, um, a distinction here. The land that we're talking about is Christ Jesus. He is our promise. He's our Canaan. And so it's, it's progressive here. We see it again. He said, I'm going to give it to you little by little. Then we talked about how the scripture says in the New Testament, he says, I'm going to take you from faith to faith, from glory to glory, little by little. I'm going to progressively take you there. And I, and I listen, myself included, there are times when there's a work of God and things that I want to happen right away. I want all these things right away. And God's not going to satisfy my carnal desire for that because I just want it quickly. When God understands, I'm not going to value or appreciate it or really walk in the completion of it until un unless he takes me through it progressively. So the wisdom of God is, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but this is my plan for you. I'm going to progressively take you through because you right now cannot handle the entirety of what you're asking me for. You have to be prepared to walk in this. And you say, well, Pastor, what do you mean? Listen, let me tell you something. If all of us be honest, you don't need to listen, just, just a, a moment of reflection. If all of us would be honest, there's some, there's some things about us that we have a hard time looking at ourselves because this, uh, it's not something that we desire. And we have a tendency to run from that, to act like that don't, it's not there. And you know why we do that? Because we're not able to handle it but it takes the Holy Spirit to give us the grace to look at an area in our life that is unlovely, that is unrighteous, agree with God that this is an area of unrighteousness, and then use our will to say, Lord, create within me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. I'm going to submit this area to you so that righteous, righteousness can be fulfilled in this area and prove that I am your son. And watch this, stay on the altar and don't get up until the Holy Spirit purifies us there. It takes a mature person to do that. Because let me tell you something, that's why I said the suffering of things that we have been traditionally religiously um, cause to understand is that when we lose a car, we lose a house, people walk away from us. No, 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 no. L listen, those are things that will happen. They will. But if your soul has been restored and righteousness has been worked out in you, you'll understand that all of this is a part of the fulfillment of righteousness. And you won't become offended. You'll know that this is a part of what is supposed to happen. It's a part of the cup that you, you have submitted to take. So the knowledge of God, faith in God, obedience to God, patience of God, watch, and diligence. The diligence means that we don't quit when the fire gets hot. That we do not quit when it gets challenging because you're looking at you and the Holy Spirit is working on you and it's very uncomfortable and that fire, the holy fire, the righteousness of God is working in that area that you don't quit, you don't give up. You allow the Holy Spirit to complete his work in that area so that righteousness can be fulfilled. And that's what we need. And the reason why God's doing this, because listen, we cannot go to a dark world with darkness in us. It's compromise. And if we go to darkness with darkness, we are not the solution. We are part of the problem. 
And because Satan has been assigned the area of darkness, he knows darkness very well. That's why Jesus said the prince of this world is already judged. And look, he comes, but he don't find nothing in me. There's nothing in me. So, um, and I think I said this on last week, but a little more complete version. Um, you're taking notes. It says, even though the work of Christ Jesus is finished or completed eternally, it is accomplished or manifested in us through faith, obedience, patience, and diligence. And here's further proof. The Bible says that Jesus the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. Now, if that was enough, we would not have needed to see the eternal work, what had already been done before the foundation of the world. The work and life of Jesus, the Lamb, walked and lived out progressively in real time in this temporary realm. Because remember, Jesus was us. He lived as us to show us what we could do. That was the need for, for that progressive work that even though it was completed, we still have to walk it out day by day, decision by decision. This is why he is the man, Christ Jesus. Romans 5, please, please look at this scripture. If someone can get this for me, Romans chapter 5, verse 15 through 19. Because Jesus is literally the first man the seed man that represents us in heaven. There is a man literally in heaven, Christ Jesus, sitting next to the father as that seed or that earnest inheritance promised to God the father. He is the seed and he is representing us who in a time to come, we all will be there. Right now, we are in him, Ephesians says. Ephesians 1 uh, says that we are, it, we are seated together with him in, in Christ. So we are spiritually in Christ Jesus. He is the literal, physical, physical man, tangible man. And the reason why he's, he's tangible, because his, as the body, the completed work, through, after resurrection, his whole body was transfigured. Uh, that's how he was able to walk through the walls when he came to the disciple. So he is the first fruits and the seed, the earnest of the inheritance um, promised to God the Father. We are in him right now, but there's coming a time when we will take our place with him there. So just in case you want, is there a man in heaven? Absolutely. But who is he? Christ Jesus. The, the Bible calls him the man. Christ Jesus. Does anybody have that scripture? Romans chapter 5, verse 15 through 19. I have an apostle. Thank you. I'm, I'm going to read it out of the Holman's Bible. Okay. But the gift of, But the gift is not like the trespass. For if by the one man's trespass the many die, how much more have the grace of God and the gift overflowed to the many by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ. And the gift is not like the one man's sin, because from one sin came the judgment, resulting in condemnation. But from many trespasses came the gift resulting in justification. Since by the one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive the overflow of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Verse 18, so then as through one trespass, there is condemnation for everyone. So also through one righteous act, there is life-giving justification for everyone. 
For just as through one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so also through the one man's obedience, the many will be made righteous. Amen. So this is why the enemy fights us from, from going through to completion with the restoration of our soul, because the restoration of our soul that also impacts our natural body um, will lead to the justification. And what it's talking about the gift and justification of righteousness is it's all, it's talking about the combination of, of the man, Christ Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They were both gifts. They were, they had, they were one, but they had two distinct um, mm -hmm. assignments. And, um, and so this is how we, we, we enter in through justification and righteousness and we, we, we are restored back because of one man's uh, transgression that caused sin, then another man, same by one man, Christ Jesus, um, of righteousness, we are restored back. And so this, this is how we, we come into it. And so um, there is a man that's representative in heaven of, of us mankind and we are in him according to Ephesians 1. So I wanted you to see that um, that he is the seed, he's the tie of the seed of man at the right hand of God as an earnest uh, representative to God the Father of the promised inheritance um, of the restoration of man or mankind. And um, uh, so this is why, oh, let me let me do this part and then we're gonna close. So if you if you look up underneath that, I says, I wrote, this is why Satan fights us. Because even in the beginning, Satan's place as a servant to God was to stand. And we know we see this in Ezekiel and uh, I believe Isaiah as well, how that Satan who was praise and worship and music was in him, his responsibility was praise and worship over the throne of God. And he stood as praise and worship. But watch this, watch this, watch this. Even though Satan's position was to stand as praise and worship, our place, even though when we reverence God by worshiping God and we bow, we lay prostrate at different times, and we, you know, and as a as a show of humility, um, even though we do those things, look at what we have been given through the man Christ Jesus. Our place is not a place of standing. We are seated. So this is why Satan fights, because we our position that we've been given in Christ supersedes what his had. He had to stand over the throne of God. But our place and position God gave us was one seated to rule, reign, and govern. And you can find this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 through 7, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 through 14. Isn't that amazing? Now, if it's something that's going to make, make your enemy mad, okay, so I how, how they get a better position than me? I don't, I don't get to sit down. I had to stand. But we've been given to, to, to be seated um, with, in Christ. The Bible says we're seated together with Christ, uh, with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we're going to end here tonight. Um, um, does anybody have a question or any comment they want to uh, to share? Okay. Um, okay, I won't. I'll, I'll end here. There were some other things that I, I wanted to bring up, but you have this the. Uh, um, a copy of these are my notes. Um, I just kind of scribble. I write as the, as the Holy Spirit is giving me stuff. I just I just write, try to keep up. <laughs> but I do want to give you this um, in the um, on the first sheet um, that talks about the paragraph that says the body of Christ is God's vessel in the earth. Um, in my writing, I was writing really quickly, and you you'll see. It says, when it talks about supply for the demand of creation, 
Um, but in my right, I was writing so fast, I didn't finish that. So if you have the paper, it's actually Romans chapter eight. I quoted it, Romans chapter eight, verse 18 through 21. So if you want to write that in that place. Romans chapter eight, verse 18 through 21. And um, that's at the beginning of the, the first, first paper uh, right here when it says the body of Christ is God's vessel. If you see at the bottom of that paragraph there where I, I wrote Romans, but I was writing so fast, I didn't give the entire scripture. So that's Romans chapter eight, verse 18 through 21. Praise God. Praise God. You need, did everybody get it? Okay. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining in. Um, Ephesians 4 talks about the grace gifts and the need for the body of Christ to be prepared to be equipped for the work of the ministry. In order for that to happen, it's going to take a mature people, um, a people that um, the Bible says that we are willing to grow up in him um, into the fullness and the stature that we have to be willing to grow. We have to be willing to mature in Christ. And all of us know, even in the natural, as an adult, sometimes in the responsibility as an adult will require us to do things that we don't necessarily feel to do or we want to do, but maturity mandates that we do it. Um, sometimes even with jobs, sometimes some of us have um, secular jobs that we go to that we would prefer to have a different job. Um, but we know that for maturity's sake and because of the responsibility and accountability that's laid at our um, charge, the things that we are responsible for, that we must diligently follow through irregardless to how we feel. And it's the same way in the spirit, that there are decisions that we're going to have to make in, in partnership with the Holy Spirit so that righteousness is in, fulfilled in us no matter the suffering that our soul will have to go through. Amen. So um, thank you again, everybody for joining in. And um, please remember uh, this Thursday, Lord willing, um, we do, we will have corporate prayer at seven um, by Zoom. And, um, and uh, I believe those who are uh, in charge of prayer <clears throat> and those, the prayer leaders, uh, intercessors, um, I think know who they are. And uh, between now and then they, if they don't, we, we, everybody will be on board. So thank you again. Um, I, I pray that you will um, just take the information that um, uh, my, my scribble notes and um, just, you know, avail yourself to them. Um, one thing I'm grateful to God for that God gives us quality word. And you, you can tell the level of God's trust when God um, moves us from, excuse me, when God moves us from milk to meat, that's progressiveness. It's going from faith to faith where we were only able to handle milk. Now, because we have grown the requirement is no longer for milk now that we have to um, take something a little stronger. And so I'm grateful to the Lord that God is, is strengthening the house, that God is um, giving us meat. Uh, we have the water, we have milk, amen, praise God. We have the different manifestations of the word of God so that the whole house can be uh, strong and strengthened no matter where you are. But 
It's intended by God that all of us grow in grace, the Bible says, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you again to all those that came Sunday to support and all those that desired to but wasn't able to. Um, Sunday all day, Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon was uh, just so amazing. Um, great, great word again um, by Prophet Kern on Sunday morning and the ministry of the Holy Spirit as he met us um, uh, as he manifested himself in the midst of us. So to God be the glory, to God be the glory. So if there are no other um, comments, or no other uh, sayings. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time of our gathering in your word. Thank you that you said that you are the light. Your word is the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our pathway. Lord, thank you that as we make the commitment to you as sons, even as Sunday, where you uh, instructed us that you were looking for that yes, that, that yes that is not negotiable, a yes that is not dependent on how things are going, but Father, you were looking for an absolute yes. As we give you that yes by faith, thank you that you will, as we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, thank you that you will cause all righteousness to be fulfilled in us. Thank you that we are a people, that, as it declared in Daniel, that we are strong and we do exploits because we know you, our God, who is our strength. You are the strength of Israel and of KDMI. And so we thank you tonight. I pray, Holy Spirit, as I trust you, um, as this word has been communicated, I trust you, Holy Spirit, that you would enlighten the eyes of our understanding, take us deeper into the word, give us clear understanding of it. And then as we walk it out with you, thank you for performing it. And we give you praise and glory and honor. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest ruling the Bible with us one and all till we come together again. Amen. Amen. Thank you all again. Have a great night. Um, look to see you on Thursday by Zoom uh, for prayer. Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night. <laughs> Trust what you say. What do you say? If you said I'm a son, I trust what you say. What do you say? If you say they are daughters, I will trust what you say. What do you say? If you say what you say, what do you say? What do you say?